name is Sarah, and I'm going to take you through all the important information you will need to make an informed decision about whether you are ready, willing, and able to become a Nurture Egg donor. Firstly, congratulations for signing up with Nurture, the best egg donation program in South Africa. We are South Africa's most successful egg donation program, and we have supported many thousands of egg donors throughout the donation process since we founded the program in 2008. With the generosity of our many, many fabulous, wonderful, kind, strong and clever egg donors, we have helped thousands of parents-to-be have the baby they have longed for for so long. I'm going to be sharing a lot of important information about how egg donation works and what will be required of you and from you. This video is about 20 minutes long and we urge you to listen carefully throughout the video. It is important that you pay careful attention to the information shared here. Once you have finished watching this video, you will need to watch a second, shorter one that will answer any questions you might have after watching the first video. Once you have watched both videos, we will ask you to confirm if you have watched them, and then we will arrange a telephone chat to answer any questions you might have, and to get more information about you and your personal situation. If you have any questions, please write them down, so that when one of the fabulous Nurture Team contacts you directly, we can discuss all your queries, questions, or concerns. Before we get going, a big Thank you from us. Thank you for taking the time and effort to complete the long application form. I know it took quite a bit of time to complete, but it is so important and valuable to the future parents when they go through the difficult process of choosing an egg donor who is right for them. Speaking of your donor application form, what happens with that is that we use your application to create an anonymous egg donor profile for you. We take out your real name and surname and other identifying information like your ID number, contact number and bank account details. We give you a pseudonym and we place your anonymous egg donor profile plus the pictures of yourself as a young child which you uploaded with your application on our password protected database. Future parents will then sign up with Nurture and view all the anonymous profiles online. As you can imagine, this is a big deal for the future parent to firstly come to terms with needing to use donor eggs to have the baby they have dreamed of for so long. And then, of course, they need to go through the very difficult process of selecting which donor would be the right egg donor for them. So how do they choose the right egg donor for them? Most of the time, the future parents will start their search by looking for a donor that is a good physical match with the mom-to-be. If the mom-to-be is tall and dark, she will choose a tall and dark donor. If she is short and fair, she will choose a short and fair donor. In this way, hopefully the baby looks a little bit like the mom-to-be. Future parents will sign up with Nurture and we'll do a search on our donor database according to various physical characteristics like hair colour, eye colour, height, race, etc. As an example, they might type in the following search. Show me all blue-eyed, blonde-haired donors based in Cape Town who are between 1.6 and 1.7 metres tall. Our website will then display all the anonymous profiles of donors who meet those criteria. The future parents then carefully go through each donor profile, viewing the photos of the donor as a young child, and reading every single word the donor has written about herself. The future parents will try to find some connection with what the donor has written about herself. If the mom-to-be is sporty, she might feel a connection with donors who describe themselves as sporty. If the mom-to-be is musical, she might look for donors who describe themselves as musical. The future moms-to-be understand that everyone is unique and that they will never find someone just like them. But they are hopeful they will find someone almost like them. Getting chosen, what next? After all that, let's talk about what happens when you get chosen. Firstly, what you need to know is that the actual donation will only happen two to three months after you've been chosen. This is because a lot of preparation goes into making sure that everything is lined up and timed perfectly so that when your eggs are ready to be retrieved, the mark to bees womb is ready to receive the embryos. Synchronizing two women's bodies is a delicate, and careful process, which is why the timing of the whole process of preparation is incredibly important. If the embryos are transferred a day too early or a day too late, the future mom will not get pregnant. Once you've been chosen to donate, the first thing that happens is that a nurture support person will be allocated as your chief support officer, your BFF, your big sister, your boo. She will look after you throughout the whole process, hold your hand, and answer any and all of your questions. Once you've been chosen by a lucky parent-to-be, Nurture will send an email to you to let you know that you have been chosen. We will check with you that you are still ready, willing, and able to donate. 
Please remember to check your emails regularly and please respond to the email as soon as you can. The future parents will be anxiously waiting to hear if their chosen donor is willing to donate to them. Once we hear back from you and the paperwork is done from our side, this takes about a week to complete. We will ask you to make your first round of appointments as part of your initial screening. Before we go ahead with the donation process, we need to make sure that you are medically and mentally healthy enough to donate. Your medical assessment will be at the fertility clinic where you have been chosen to donate. For a list of where the fertility clinics are located, please visit our website www.nurture.co.za. Your medical assessment will involve a gynae checkup where the doctor will do an internal ultrasound to have a look at your ovaries to make sure they are healthy and that you have enough eggs to be a suitable egg donor. The doctor will also do a general health checkup, a medical questionnaire, and some blood tests where they will test your blood for infectious diseases like HIV and hepatitis. Once you've been declared medically fit to donate, you will have a session with a psychologist or social worker, either in person or online, to make sure you are mentally healthy enough to donate. Sounds scary, but it is actually a really great process. It is your opportunity to chat about any feelings or concerns or questions you might have about the process. The therapist will also take a family mental health history from you. Now, we all have a crazy aunt or a crazy uncle, and that's okay. But hereditary disease like bipolar or schizophrenia in your immediate family will mean you don't qualify to be an egg donor. You might be asking yourself, how much would all of these tests and appointments cost me? The answer is nothing. You do not have to pay for any of the tests, all the appointments, all the medication. The only thing you have to pay for is getting yourself to the clinic on time. Once you've got the green light from the fertility specialist and the psychologist and have been declared fit to donate, the planning starts. This is a very important part of the process as your cycle and the mom-to-be cycle have to be perfectly synchronized. Remember I said that the actual donation will only happen around two to three months after you've been chosen to donate? As part of the planning of the treatment, it is very important that you let the fertility clinic know of any dates that you can't donate. If you have exams in two months time, or you are going away on holiday in a month's time, or you have a weekend away in three months time, let the clinic know about that, so that they don't book your appointments and egg retrieval date for when you are not available. Once your treatment plan has been finalized and the dates confirmed with you and the mom-to-be, you will be issued with your medication with clear instructions on how to take the medication and when to take the medication. What does a typical treatment plan look like? While each donation plan is unique, a typical plan looks something like this. After your first screening appointments and the treatment plan has been finalized, both you and the mom-to-be will start on a mild oral contraceptive. This is used to synchronize the two cycles. Both you and the mom-to-be will start the pill on the same day, and three weeks later, both of you will stop the pill on the same day. Both of you should get your period around five days after stopping the pill. From that point, your two cycles are now in sync with each other. You will now take medication to grow and mature the eggs to get them ready for egg retrieval. At the same time, the mom-to-be will take medication to prepare her womb to receive the embryos. After all the waiting, waiting to start the pill, waiting to stop the pill, waiting for your period, the busy time of your donation starts. This is when you will be taking the fertility medication. The fertility medication you take is a hormone called FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone. FSH occurs naturally in the body, and its role is to grow and mature the eggs. The medication comes in an injection format, and you will need to inject yourself for around 10 days as part of this process. Do not freak out! Yes, I said you have to inject yourself, but I promise, it really isn't that bad. The medication comes in a pre-filled syringe, almost like the pens that the diabetics use to inject themselves. It's a tiny, thin needle that has to go just under the skin. I mean, it isn't fun to poke yourself with a needle, but it really isn't that sore. More like a pinch than a pain. Stubbing your toe is way worse than that little needle. The nurse at the fertility clinic will show you exactly how to inject, when to inject, and where to inject. Your tummy is usually the easiest, as most of us have some padding on our tummies, which makes it pretty pain-free to inject there. And if you really can't inject yourself, ask your partner or a friend or a relative to administer the injection for you. Who knows, your partner might have been waiting for the opportunity to stab you with a sharp object. Once you've started the fertility injections, you will need to go to see the doctor at the fertility clinic for an appointment and an ultrasound every second or third day. 
This is so the doctor can monitor your body's response to the fertility medication. Some people's ovaries might not be overachievers and might need a little bit more medication. Other people's ovaries might be super excited and might need less medication. It is important that the doctor monitors your response for your own health and for the success of the donation. You will need to attend between three and four appointments during this 10 day period. These appointments are vitally important. You need to attend each of these appointments on the exact date and time you are given. You will know well in advance when your appointments are so that you can plan accordingly. An important note to bear in mind, these appointments will happen during normal office hours, Monday to Friday. So if you are working or attending classes, it is important that you factor this in when you agree to donate. The checkup appointments are usually fairly quick and shouldn't take more than an hour of your time. You will need to take one day of work and that is the day of egg retrieval. You will know the date well in advance so that you can put in for a day's leave. If you do need a doctor's note for any time of work, the fertility doctor can issue one for you. So, you've been taking your medication, you've been to see the doctor a few times, and your eggs are now plump and ready for egg retrieval. You might be wondering, how on earth do they retrieve the eggs? And most importantly, will it hurt? No, it will not hurt at all. Egg retrieval is a safe, painless, non-invasive procedure. There is no operation, no cutting or scarring or bleeding or stitches required. How it works is as follows. On the day of egg retrieval, the nurse will give you a time that you need to be at the fertility clinic. You will probably be asked not to eat or drink anything before the procedure. Once you've arrived and settled in, the nurse will take you to the retrieval room. You will be given a mild sedative called twilight anesthesia through an IV. So you will be asleep throughout the procedure and will feel no pain but you will still be able to breathe on your own. In other words, you are not knocked out completely. You are just in a deep sleep. Once you are asleep, the doctor will insert a fine needle through the vaginal wall into the ovary. The needle goes into each ovarian follicle and uses gentle suction to pull out the fluid and the egg that comes with it. This fluid is then collected in a test tube and given to the embryologist who will retrieve the little eggs from the fluid. The whole process is quick and painless. You will then wake up about 30 minutes later and be given a small snack and something to drink. You can then go home. Very important, you cannot drive yourself home as you've had sedation during the procedure and this makes you a bit groggy for the first few hours after the procedure. So you will need to get someone to fetch you from the fertility clinic or take an Uber or taxi home. When you get home, you can chill and take it easy. Do some Netflix and chill at home. But the next day, you are back to your normal self and you can hop, skip, jump, swim, or do whatever you want to do. There is no downtime from the procedure. You might be wondering what the side effects of the medication and the egg retrieval process are. Let's talk about the medication first. The fertility medication you take is very safe. It has been used for fertility treatment since the 1960s and over 8 million babies have been born through fertility treatment using these fertility drugs. The medication is a hormone, so depending on how sensitive you are to hormones and how much PMS affects you usually, you might feel a bit PMS-like. You might experience temporary side effects like bloating, tender breasts, or a bit headachey towards the end. And yes, you might even feel a bit moody. Most people are absolutely fine on the fertility medication. But if you do feel a bit moody or PMS-like, you can just blame it on the medication. It is not your fault that you are behaving like a fire-breathing dragon. It is the hormones. <laughs> but rest assured, the medication won't make you fat and it won't give you pimples unless you eat 100 donuts a day. So just make sure you don't eat 100 donuts a day and you will be fine. If you are at all concerned at any point before, during or after the egg donation process, please do not hesitate to contact the doctor or the nurse immediately. They will take very good care of you. And of course, we are always available to you to reassure you or answer any questions you might have. So what are the risks of egg donation? Well, like any elective procedure, there are always risks involved. It is, however, a very safe procedure and you will be very well looked after by the medical team at the fertility clinic. Although very rare, the following are documented risks. The risk of infection. As with any procedure where you pierce the skin, such as earrings, tattoos, dentists, if you go to a dodgy place, you could have a risk of infection. 
But we only work with the best clinics in the country who are under the strict guidelines of the Department of Health. The risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or OHSS, is a condition caused when the ovaries adversely react to an abundance of hormones. The ovaries become swollen and painful and possibly leak fluid. It is not a long-term condition if treated quickly, which is why it is so important to contact the doctor or the nurse if you don't feel 100% after the procedure. Luckily, the risk of OHSS is less than 0.5% because of the very safe protocol the fertility clinics in South Africa use when doing egg donation treatment. If and when you get chosen, you will be asked to sign a consent form that reads very much like the insert in a Panado packet. If you ever read those inserts, you might never take a Panado again. <laughs> like any provider in the medical industry, we have to list possible risks, no matter how scary it sounds. Don't be frightened by it. If you have any questions, ask us or the doctor. What happens after you've donated? After the egg retrieval, your period usually arrives around 5 to 10 days later, and then your cycle goes back to normal as it was before your donation. We will stay in touch with you to see how you are doing, and then around a month later, we will ask you whether you want to donate again. Around two weeks after you've donated, the mom-to-be will do a pregnancy test, and we will find out whether your donation resulted in a pregnancy. Exciting! Just a quick note on this. Although this process is very, very successful, and 70% of the time the mom-to-be gets pregnant, it doesn't always work the first time every time. When you realize how much goes into making a baby, you wonder how anyone ever gets pregnant. You need the right eggs, with the right sperm, in the right womb, at the right time. If any one of these variables are not aligned, the pregnancy won't happen. So please don't blame yourself if your donation does not result in a pregnancy for your recipient couple. Speaking of pregnancy, a very important note about contraception. Before, during, and after the egg donation procedure, you will need to ensure that you take additional contraceptive measures, like condoms, to prevent unplanned pregnancy. Once you've finished your donation and your first period has arrived, you can go back to your regular contraception that you were on before the donation. We are almost there. Hang in there. Drug testing. Please note that some clinics do do drug testing on the donors, as some recreational drugs have a negative effect on egg quality. If you are a regular recreational drug user, please refrain from any drug usage before and during the donation. How we communicate. We will communicate mainly with you via email and WhatsApp. Please save our number on your phone and check your emails regularly. We need to be able to get hold of you to tell you you've been chosen. What we expect from you. You are still here. Still alive? Still listening? <laughs> Good. Thanks for hanging in there and paying such careful attention. Let me end off by summarizing what we expect from you. Your responsibility as an egg donor is to take all your medication as instructed. Attend all appointments on time. Update us with the big changes in your life. If you are moving to Dubai or going on a cruise ship or having a baby, please let us know. We will either temporarily or permanently remove your profile from our active database until you let us know you are ready, willing and able to donate. Communicate timelessly. Please check your email and WhatsApps regularly and reply to us as quickly as possible. The bottom line is this. Being an egg donor is an amazing thing. It will be one of the most rewarding journeys of your life. It requires enormous commitment from you. There is a difference between wanting to help someone and being able to help someone. We might all want to help future parents have a baby, but we might not all be able to. If your life is too busy or full right now, and you are unable to commit to attend all the appointments and adhere to all the instructions, then this is not the right thing for you. At least not right now. So, after listening and absorbing all this information, you might decide that this process is not for you ever, or not for you right now, and that is 100% fine. We would much rather you say no now, than only say no once a recipient couple have fallen in love with your profile and have chosen you as their egg donor. The parents-to-be have been through so much heartache and pain on their journey. The last thing we want to do is add to their pain and disappointment. If you decide not to continue with your application, please let us know via email or WhatsApp ASAP, and we will wish you love, luck, and light for your future endeavors and remove your profile from our active database. We thank you for your time and effort invested to this point. If you are keen to continue with your application, please watch the second video. 
And once you've watched both videos, let us know you are keen and have finished watching the videos. And then one of our team will contact you to arrange a quick one-on-one -on -one telephone chat to answer any questions you might still have and to get to know you a little better. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you.